Okay, hi. So in today's video, what I want to talk about is uh, salvation. What is salvation? And what exactly are we saved from? Because I think that is the biggest thing that a lot of people don't even know what salvation is or what, tr what it truly means to be saved according to the Bible. And also what is it that you're actually saved from? I mean, um, it helps to know what you're saved from in order to understand what the whole plan of salvation is and what salvation truly is to those who are believed. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start off with uh, Romans 10. If you don't know anything about salvation, if you're if you're new to Christianity, if you're not saved, um, I recommend that you read Romans, the entire book of Romans. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna dive into it, and we are going to go over Romans ten um, and explain what salvation is, and then I'm going to uh, start explaining what you're actually saved from. So let's start with Romans righteousness by faith alone. So what I do want to say is that um, salvation is a gift. I know I I remember. I remember when I was seven, that's when my mom got saved and she became um, very heavily involved in the church at that time. She's always been involved in the church. We've always been to church since I was little, but at the age of seven is when I first uh, heard about salvation and my mom led all of her children to the Lord with the prayer of salvation. Um, at that time, I really still didn't understand what, what salvation is or what we were saved from um other than not going to hell is what you know um if you're saved you're not going to hell blah 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 that's pretty much all i really understand understood but in my older years and now that i gave my life back to god and been studying and reading the word for myself i really really truly am starting to understand exactly what salvation is exactly what it means to be saved and um that way i i can rejoice in my salvation and it, it, now that i read the word for myself and i'm understanding the word which i encourage everyone to read the word for your for yourself and ask the holy spirit to reveal the truth to you um, is <clears throat> really, really, um, it took me a minute to truly understand what salvation really is. Um, when you dive deep into it because we were all born in sin everybody everybody on the on the planet was born into sin that's just our nature because of the fall of Adam and Eve um, so we were all born into sin we're all sinners there I want to say that salvation is a gift um, will everybody be saved no not everyone is called um, to become a child of Christ follower of God my thought was yeah everybody's called but when you dive deeper into the word you will understand that there are some people who are this is God's story this is God's story and there are some people who will never never accept never accept Yeshua as their Savior and on on this channel I will refer to uh, Jesus as Yeshua um, you'll hear me refer to God as Yah. Uh, those are the, the names that I use. I don't really use Jesus or just the word God alone. I do interchange them from time to time, but mainly it will be Yahshua and Yah. Um, so, um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, let me get back to it. Uh, yeah, so you'll you'll see in the word when you read it for yourself that not everybody is called to be a follower of Yahshua. Um, just like um, just like when I I used to tell you guys about the lifestyle, right? And how if you people would will was often would often say when it came to the lifestyle that um, that everybody who came isn't supposed to be there right so and here was my thought on the lifestyle if you truly wasn't um ready or you really wasn't supposed to be or or liked the lifestyle you wouldn't be there right you wouldn't be in the lifestyle you you just wouldn't be there you know you may be ignorant or you may not have enough knowledge about the lifestyle however you can get that knowledge and learn that knowledge as you go and by being around other people who have also been in it but if there was someone who truly wasn't lifestyle 
like we used to say, right? That person's not lifestyle. That person is just a, a phony or a fake. That person's not really lifestyle-ish. Um, you know, it's, they're just vanilla in the lifestyle. If they are truly vanilla, vanilla and not lifestyle, they would not ever go to lifestyle events. They would not be involved in the lifestyle because they would detest the lifestyle, right? It, they, their, their thought patterns, their, their mindset is like, ugh. The lights are, oh, why would you do that? Oh, that's nasty. That's gross. Um, no, you guys are, are you know, wild and that's not right. Blah, blah, blah. Right? They would not even want to be involved in it. There are many stages in the lifestyle. Like I said, there are newcomers and they have to learn. And then you have your OGs who've been there for a while. That is the same way it is with salvation. It is the complete opposite. So on, on opposite spectrums, right? When you're, when you get saved, you're called to be saved. If you are listening to this message right now and you are resonating with it in any type of way, that is, it's not me talking to you. That is literally, uh, God calling you, choosing you to hear his word and to accept his word and calling you over to his kingdom. And you can't, you have the right to accept that or reject that. But not everyone will be called. Not everybody will hear his voice. Not everyone will be um, a sheep of Jesus, of Yeshua. Not everyone will hear that call. Not everyone will accept it. There is a lot of people who will reject it. There are people who will hear it and they will reject it. And, and they will say, that's not for me. That's not where I wanna be at. That's not where my heart is. And and there and that's what it is. So when you hear God calling you and you 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 drift towards you drift towards it. So it is a gift. It's a gift and it's a calling to come into the kingdom of Yeshua. All right. So once you accept this gift, and I'm gonna read this real quick, Romans 10, righteousness by faith alone. Brothers, my heart desire and prayer to God concerning them is for their salvation. I can testify about them that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Because they disregard the righteousness from God and attempt to establish their own righteousness, that's very important, they establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is from the law, the one who does the things, the one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith speaks like this. Do not say in your heart who will go up to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will go into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. On the contrary, what does it say? The message is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With the heart, one believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, one confesses, resulting in salvation. This is very important. With the heart, one believes, resulting in the righteousness, and with the mouth, one confesses, resulting in salvation. Now the scripture says, no one who believes on him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, since the same Lord of all is rich to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, so that is how that is how salvation you receive salvation, right? If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's as, it's as simple as that, but it also comes with repentance. Um, you know, you repent, repent, repent. That is all through the Bible is repentance you got to repent and repent means to not only confess your sins but also to turn from your sins right 
Uh, but it doesn't require you to do to act. It doesn't require you to. Um, you're not saved by works. You're saved by faith alone. That is that is what it means to be to be saved is to believe and confess the Lord is your savior. Now, um, this is what I want to say because I was I I was so confused about sin and being saved and do you stay saved and all that stuff. So once you are saved, you are saved. You're 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 saved. <laughs> it's a gift. You receive it. However, you want to show fruits. You you want to receive the Holy Spirit. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit should start showing in in your life. It's a symptom of salvation. It's not you don't do good things. It's not your behavior and how you act is not has nothing to do with you being saved other than the fruit of the of the Holy Spirit doing a work in you. When you su submit, and like I said up here in verse 3, because they disregard the righteousness from God and attempt to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. And what this verse is, is really saying is we need to submit and surrender to God. Allow God to do a work in us. Allow God to change our hearts. Draw near to God. Ask him to, to to just draw you nearer to him after you get saved. Because here's the thing. You can be saved and show no fruits. And what good is that? What good is a tree, a fruit tree, if it doesn't produce any fruit? And, you know, um, if you read Psalms, I forgot what verse it is, but there is a verse in Psalms that teaches you how to show fruit because I was like, you know, immediate, I think some people change immediately. And I think sometimes it takes a little bit longer for other people. But if you truly believe in, in Yeshua and his saving power and his grace, then you also believe that his power can change you, that his power can uh, transform you. Now, how do we transform our life? You re you transform you transform your life and start showing fruits by the renewing of your mind. This is what needs to take place. So you do your repentance. You you know you ask God for forgiveness for all your sins. You confess Him as your Lord and Savior. You believe that you know God that He died on on that He was crucified for our sins and that his redemption so he lived a perfect life he came to live a perfect life to do god's will on earth and then he was crucified for our sins he took our he took our place from judgment right so this is where we get into what are you saved from this is the part what what are we saved from we are saved from god's wrath and let me go down here revelations revelations 15:1 this is what we're being saved from. We are being saved from the wrath of God because we're not appointed to wrath. Once you're saved, you're not appointed to wrath. What is the wrath of God, though? Um, Revelations 15, 1. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels have the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. Revelation 16, 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath on God, wrath of God on the earth. And then the four angels, uh, Revelation 16, 8 and through 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat. And they blaspheme the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. There's going to be some wrath coming, you guys. There's going to be some wrath. And we are going to be saved from this wrath. And I can, there's so many topics that I could just veer off of. I'm trying not to veer off of them. I'm trying not to go down the path. And it's a rabbit hole of things. But, you know, like I, like I said before, I do not believe in pre-trib um, pre rapture. 
and you know it it doesn't make you saved or not saved if you do if you don't if you believe in uh the pre tribulation rapture it does not have anything with uh salvation it doesn't have anything to do with salvation is that's just what you believe i happen to believe that there is no pre trib rapture i believe that we are in the time of tribulation right now um so that is my belief uh, according to what I have read into the, in the word myself, what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me, um, what I've learned from other people who are teaching about the Bible, this is what I believe. I believe that we are, um, there is no rapture, right? But however it goes, a lot of people will agree that we are not appointed to God's wrath. And I totally agree with that. We are not appointed to God's wrath does not mean that we won't go through the tribulation uh but during the time of tribulation which god has said and the bible the bible says it will it will be like the time of noah and lot if you notice in the time of noah and and with lot there was wrath upon the earth god's wrath was poured out on the earth with the flood and with lot um uh the city of sodom and gomorrah was destroyed it was destroyed. How were Noah and his family and Lot and his family preserved from the wrath of God? Noah and his family was put into the boat, right? Noah and them were pre-warned. They were told. They were chosen. They heard and they obeyed. God said, build this boat build it like this this is what i want you to do you and your family and everything that i've told you to do needs to go inside of this boat when a time is appointed when i tell you and you will be saved from my wrath that i'm going to pour down on this earth it will be like the time of noah noah was not removed from the earth noah never left the earth noah was protected during the time of God's wrath, him and his family was saved. Same way with Lot. Lot, uh, God told Lot, come up out of that city. Get up out of that city. You and your family, I'm going to save you from my wrath. I need you to get up and move. Notice there, there was a command. There was obedience involved. There was hearing God's word. If you can't hear God's word, if you're not listening for God, if you're not paying attention, if you're not being aware, if you're not tuned in, if you're not if you're not aware of what's happening, you won't come out. So this is me telling you guys, hey, listen up. It was it's going to be like the time of Noah and the time of Lot. He's going to protect us. Lot was not removed from the earth. Noah was not removed from the earth, but they were protected. And we will be protected from God's wrath as well. If you're saved, you will be protected. That is what we are being saved from. We are being saved from God's wrath. And we will reign with Christ. And we will live with Christ and have eternal life. Those who don't uh, receive salvation from the Lord. Those who don't accept Jesus or Yahshua as their Messiah, as their Savior um they will be destroyed and that that is it they will be destroyed there is no eternal life for, for them and that is and also we can go into another topic that will be for another day i'll explain that we'll, we'll you know there's lots of topics that i want to um talk about and go over there's um what is hell and where do we go once god returns a lot of people think that we're going to be in heaven that that there's no there's no scripture there's no scripture in the Bible that says we're going to be in heaven. Um, in fact, it says God that that uh, Yeshua will be here on earth. There will be a new earth. Um, it never says that we that those who are saved will be leaving earth. This is another reason why I don't believe in a um, the worldly view of what the rapture is and pre-trib uh, rapture because the Bible never says that we're going to be living in in heaven it says there will be a new earth he's going to create a new jerusalem for us here on earth a new world <laughs> and i will go into that on a whole nother topic 
but um, I just wanted to go over um, what is salvation. So again, salvation is um, when you confess with your heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord and you um, confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead and you will be saved. So it has a lot to do with your heart. I, I'm gonna say one, one last thing. Um, my confusion with salvation was about uh, sin, right? Because <clears throat> when you think about salvation, you think about uh, living this holy, roly life, right? A lot of people says holy, roly life. Uh, actually, living a holy, roly life does not even uh, constitute as salvation. Um, there's a lot of fake people out here. There's a lot of people who look Christian, who look holy, who seem to do the right things. There's a lot of people who um, will take the law and use the law and stick to that law righteously like you know this is if you break this rule you break that rule then you're not saved or whatever and they reject the message that god is telling you in romans 15 the one that paul is talking about in romans 10 right here where he says that i can testify about them that they have zeal for god but not according to knowledge because they disregard the righteousness from god that's the only way you want to get it. And by believing in Yeshua, um, they disregard the righteousness from God and attempt to establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted to God's righteousness. You, you have to surrender to God and let God do the work. There's, there's nothing on this earth. There is nothing you can do to be good enough to be saved. You cannot... It is impossible for you to do anything that's going to make you good enough for salvation, to be saved, to be called righteous. Our righteousness comes from Yeshua dying and being crucified for us. He exchanged his life and his stand and his standing with God with us his righteousness became our righteousness and he took our sins so your sins are forgiven however don't this is what the devil will do the devil will cause you when you stumble <laughs> when you stumble don't separate yourself from god right when 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 i fell back when i fell back and 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 um just forgot about god forgot about my upbringing, forgot about Jesus in my life when I, I woke up every day, didn't think about God, had no thoughts in my mind about, about, about Yah at all, um, never, never crossed my mind, didn't read the Bible, didn't go to church. Um, I still don't go to church because I, I haven't found a church here in Indianapolis that um, is worth going to, and that's the truth. Um, not yet. I haven't found anyone, any church that is bibli biblically, biblically sound. And that's not to offend anyone. I just haven't. My understanding was I was having a hard time. Like I was having a hard time. I, but when you do that, when, when you, when you sit there and say, oh gosh, I can't, I can't be right. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't quit this. I can't quit that. Um, I, I keep doing this and I keep doing that, and I'm just not worthy. Well, then you, then you, you, <laughs> you have to understand that you are worthy of salvation. That you are counted according to the word, if you believe in Yeshua and why He came. Don't don't uh discredit the work that he did he came here to live a perfect life to complete god's will to die and be crucified to take our place for our sins so he could give us righteousness so he can save us 
so that we will be justified in the court of God. That is the whole purpose of him coming to the coming to earth, being born of a virgin Mary and dying for our sins. That is the whole purpose. And that is what you have to believe in when you when you when it says believe in Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. When it says when it says believe, that is what you have to believe in. You have to believe that you are saved you have to believe that you are saved and when you believe that you don't allow a separation from you and god you that that was my problem back then i, I would do something and i feel so guilty so guilty that i would just just i, I don't even want to look at, i don't even want to look at god i don't want him to look at me i'm going to pretend like he's not there i don't want to read the word i don't i feel guilty blah 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 no, we need to draw closer. We need to come closer to God. We need to draw nearer to him. That is what keeps us there. That's what we need. That is planting yourself. That's what shows fruit. That is what is going to start showing fruit in your life. You got to keep renewing your mind. That is how you get be transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When, when I was in the lifestyle, when I was on this channel giving out advice about the lifestyle, what did I used to say? What did I always say? I always said that you have to start transforming your mind. And this is this and what, what I was saying to you guys and what I was doing was exactly what Satan does. He takes biblical things and he translates it to secular things, right? So everything I was telling you in the lifestyle, it applies when it comes to Christianity. When it comes to Christianity, you have to renew your mind, right? So when, when, I, when I was teaching you guys about the lifestyle and I was telling you guys that you got to start over. You have to throw out everything you've ever learned about relationships, everything you ever learned about life. And you have to start changing your mind and your, your mindset to in order to understand the lifestyle in order to to you have to retrain your mind in order to be in the lifestyle this is the same thing you have to throw out everything you've learned everything that's that that you know everything that you've been taught go back to the word and read it for yourself and ask the holy spirit to reveal the truth to you read it with a uh a lens of awareness that you have salvation read it through those contexts everything in the bible there is instructions in there for us there's instructions on how to live your life there's instructions on how to draw nearer to god there's instructions about how to produce fruit there is instructions in the word in knowledge yeah where it says i can testify about them that they had zeal for god but not according to knowledge 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 and understand that you can't establish righteousness on your own you can't you can't fix yourself you have to call upon the lord and let him do the work and be participants be participants in your transformation by renewing your mind that is reading the word changing your habits through reading and once you read and read and read and you get an understanding and you get wisdom your heart starts to change and things that you used to like you don't like no more and the people that you used to hang around with something in your spirit is like mm, i don't want to do this i don't want to be around these people i don't i don't i don't align with how they believe and what they think and then and also reading the word you also understand what's what is of God and, and what's not, so you don't fall for serving the the wrong the wrong God. That you can't serve two masters, right? You start to understand what it means to serve God. This is how you worship God. That's another subject, but I'm going to end it right here. I I hope I explained it enough. I encourage you to read the Word for yourself. And also, if you want to be saved, 
if you want God's salvation, I was I would I recommend going into a quiet spot and be truthful and just let it all out. Be praying to God is basically a conversation from the heart. It's a conversation from the heart. Fall down and submit to him. Submitting, surrender. I I give up. I give up. I I don't know how to I don't I don't know how to do this. Show me, teach me your ways. Forgive me of all my sins. I would go down every list <laughs> you can think of. Lord, forgive me for this, that, 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 and that. And teach me your way. Guide me. Save me. Show me. Protect me. Lead me. One thing I do is read Psalms and Proverbs every morning. There's uh, 31 Proverbs. I, I start with Psalms 1 and that, you know, whatever day is, like today is the 11th. So I read Psalms 11, then I add 30, 30 to that, and I read, read Psalms 41, and then add 30 to that, and I read Psalms 71, add 30 to, 30 to that, Psalms 101, and then, um, you know, on and on like that, and then I read Proverbs 11, and I read that every morning. If you read Proverbs, Proverbs will, will teach you how to pray. Read Proverbs in with awareness. Uh, Proverbs will teach you how to pray. It will show you how to produce fruit. It will teach you how to talk to God and come to Him with boldness. You got to you got to read Proverbs and see how how He actually talks to God. He talks to God like, "Do this for me." <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I need you to come save me now. I need you to to do this. And what I noticed in Proverbs also is that that he admits that he sins he admits that he can't control his flesh he admits this but at the same time he's still confessing that you are my salvation that you are going to save me that is you who's going to be who's going to count me righteous it's not me i keep sinning my body is weak my flesh is weak my enemies are still coming for me but i still trust in you I trust that you're going to save me. I trust in your salvation. I trust that at the end of the day,